Engineers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant are grappling with another problem far below their feet. They've been monitoring radioactivity in groundwater at Fukushima Daiichi and trying to limit the amount getting into the ocean. Now they've detected contamination even deeper. Workers say they took water from 25 meters underground near reactor 4. They say each liter contains 6.7 becquerels of cesium-137 and 89 becquerels of strontium and other substances that emit beta rays. They want to check whether those materials got into the water while they were lifting the samples through shallower levels. They plan to investigate next month. Officials are worried that any contamination at the deeper level could be leaking into the ocean. Workers have also detected substances that emit beta radiation in groundwater near reactor 2. The concentration has been rising since last month. It reached a record high on Thursday this week at 1.9 million becquerels per liter. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is trying to make life easier for people affected by the 2011 nuclear accident in Fukushima. He and his cabinet approved fresh guidelines to boost the reconstruction effort and help people settle in new communities if they need to. <laughs> The reconstruction of Fukushima is essential for Japan's revitalization. More than 100,000 residents are still forced to live away from their homes because of the nuclear accident. Our mission is to help them get back their regular lives as soon as possible. The government plans to increase compensation for residents who want to rebuild or renovate their homes when their evacuation orders are lifted. They can also receive payments for mental distress for one year after the orders expire. Those who can't return home and want to start a new life elsewhere will be able to get financial support to purchase homes. They'd also be eligible to be compensated for mental distress. Mitsuru Suzuki is among those who have given up living at their homes in the evacuation zones. He built a house in the city of Iwaki. He says some people who are adjusting to life in their new communities need support. The operator of Fukushima Daiichi, Tokyo Electric Power Company, and other firms that run nuclear plants will continue to finance the assistance. The government plans to raise the limit of its interest-free loans to TEPCO to about $87 billion to make sure residents Fukushima accidents paid. spurred municipalities near nuclear plants to work on evacuation plans. But 60% of local governments within 30 kilometers of the facilities say they have yet to draw something up. Officials say 82 of the 135 municipalities had still not finished compiling evacuation plans as of the beginning of this month. Many municipalities are having difficulties finding places to evacuate people outside their boundaries. They're also still unsure about how to move elderly people from hospitals and care facilities to safer the places. The operators of some nuclear plants in Japan are taking steps to restart their reactors. But first, they need to satisfy several requirements. Reactors need to pass a safety tests by the Nuclear Regulation Authority before they can go back online. The people who operate the Shimane plant in western Japan suspended their number two reactor for routine inspections in January of last year. It's been offline ever since. Next week, local governments are expected to allow them to ask regulators for a test. Managers at the utility say they plan to make the request before the end of the year. Managers of another plant in northeastern Japan are considering their next steps. Those at Tohoku Electric Power Company are considering whether to file for safety screening of a reactor before the end of the year. The Onagawa plant suffered damage in the disaster two years ago.
Japan's government has decided to raise the ceiling for interest-free loans to Tokyo Electric Power Company. The utility operates the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The government plans to raise the upper limit of its loans to TEPCO from the current $48 billion to around $87 billion. The decision comes after the projected costs for dealing with the aftermath of the 2011 nuclear accident are expected to rise further. The government estimates that $48 billion will be needed for payment of damages and $24 billion for efforts to decontaminate affected areas. $11 billion will be required to construct and manage intermediate storage facilities for soil and other waste generated from the decontamination work. All these costs are expected to be eventually shouldered by TEPCO. The expansion of the government loans will ensure that the utility has sufficient funds for post-disaster operations. The plan will be formally decided on Friday at a meeting of the government's nuclear disaster. In the second part of our series on decontamination, we look at the challenges facing farmers at Fukushima. The 2011 nuclear accident devastated the prefecture's main industry, agriculture. Japan's leaders halted shipments of produce from Fukushima Prefecture right after the nuclear accident. Now they've begun lifting the restrictions as many crops have passed stringent safety checks. But agriculture industry in most of the evacuation zones remains frozen as farmers wait for authorities to decontaminate their land. The Environment Ministry is leading that effort in Fukushima. The process involves several methods depending on the level of contamination. The area where radiation level is relatively high, they mainly strip the topsoil completely as it contains the highest level of radioactive particles. This work can reduce the contamination, but when it comes to revitalizing agriculture, some producers say much more should be done. NHK World's Masami Ukon visited a farmer who is struggling to get back on his feet. Fukushima's Itate village is a part of the evacuation zone. People can enter some districts like this during the daytime, but they aren't allowed to live there. Muneo Kanno comes from a long line of farmers. He was born in Itate and has spent his entire life farming. Kanno prided himself on how little he used pesticides and chemical fertilizers. He was committed to delivering fresh produce to consumers in urban areas. And he says quality soil is where it all begins. Not being able to farm the blessings of the earth is like losing your life. The level of radiation is relatively high in Itate. So the village decided to strip the topsoil. Bukano says that poses a threat to his livelihood. This five centimeter of topsoil is rich in nutrients. Farmers spend their lives cultivating it. The dilemma is that Itate village's decontamination method may clean up the field, but without the topsoil, growing crops is much harder. Kano wanted to figure out a way to remove radioactive materials, but keep the nutrients. He turned to a group of experts. Professor Masaru Mizoguchi studies soil physics at the University of Tokyo. He's been looking into how radioactive cesium disperses in the ground. Two years ago, they began experimenting on farmland in Itate. They focus on one of the unique properties of clay, its ability to bind with cesium. Over time, cesium particles in the ground attach themselves to clay in the soil. When workers turn over the topsoil in the water field paddy, the heavier matter sinks to the bottom. But the clay and cesium float. Drain the muddy water and you remove much of the radioactive materials. 
Right now, I think the study of soil is the only field that can help find a solution to the problem of cesium contamination in Itate. But it's delicate work, not suitable for heavy machinery. Kano and the team of volunteers use handheld tools. By repeatedly churning the topsoil and draining the water, they can strip off 80% of the cesium, but leave most of the nutrients. This method also cuts the volume of radioactive waste. The tainted water is pooled and will be dried here. It will require far less space than the topsoil stripping method. Everyone dealing with the decontamination issue needs to be on the ground, looking at what's going on and working together. That's how we'll solve this. They've been test farming rice in one of their decontaminated fields, and the results are encouraging. Radiation readings are falling within the national safety standard. I'm anticipating an uphill battle. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're all trying our best, thinking we can make a difference. Kano and his team say they will continue to experiment with ways to decontaminate Fukushima's fields. They are sharing their findings with local and national leaders in the hope they can make the work more efficient and get the farmers back into their fields. The Japanese government panel estimates that a powerful earthquake striking directly below Tokyo could kill 23,000 people and cause economic damage equal to the country's national budget. Officials updated their calculations on such a quake for the first time in eight years. The estimate is based on a scenario of a magnitude 7.3 quake striking southern Tokyo on a windy winter's evening. The earthquake is likely to cause devastating jolts to central Tokyo and to parts of three neighboring prefectures, Kanagawa, Chiba, and Saitama. The shaking and resulting fires could destroy 610,000 buildings, leaving 23,000 people dead and 123,000 injured. Infrastructure will be seriously affected and public transport paralyzed. Central Tokyo will be clogged with traffic for weeks. Railway services could be out of operation for a week to a month. The panel says economic damage is estimated at over $900 billion. That's as much as Japan's national budget. We may lose extremely important governmental functions in the event a tremor directly strikes the capital. The panel report says the number of deaths could be reduced to a tenth if more buildings were, more, were made resistant to earthquakes and fires. The report cites the need to check the quake resistance of facilities to be used for the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics and Paralympics. The report also recommends ways to protect foreign tourists. It says authorities should put up signs to guide them to safety and issue earthquake alerts in several languages. Japanese tourism officials estimate that the number of foreign visitors to the country has top the government goal of 10 million for the first time. Tourism Minister Akihiro Ota attended a ceremony at Tokyo's Narita Airport to mark the milestone. A couple from Thailand was invited to join the event as the 10 millionth visitor of the year. We often come to Japan. I'm so impressed by the services of sales clerks and other people wherever we go in this country. The number of visitors from Asian countries has surged due to a weaker yen and easier visa applications for people from Southeast Asian countries. The government has been stepping up efforts to attract foreign tourists as part of its economic growth strategy. Ota said the next goal is to lure 20 million visitors by around 2020 when Japan hosts the Summer Olympic Games.